everyone and welcome back to my vlog. Uh, for today's topic, we'll talk about um, illegal dismissal. So, I figured na bakit hindi nga naman tayo mag-discuss ng mga different labor law topics since um, I think most of the viewers naman would appreciate uh, either matulungan sila sa sitwasyon nila or maging dagdag knowledge pa ito if uh, hindi nyo man kailangan sa ngayon yung knowledge or yung topic na ituturo ko. No? So, uh, like what I said, um, illegal dismissal lang ating magiging topic but before that I just would like to say thank you to everyone who has been um, watching, liking, commenting and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, actually this is the 39th episode of, of, of this vlog so I like to uh, produce contents in 10 as a uh, parang batch of 10 parang gano. so if this is like the 39th video, so after this one more, and then I have like parang four batches, and then um, that's the time that I think of the next uh, set. So another 10 uh, legal topics. So if you have any suggestion, put it in the comment box. Wag po kayo mag hesitate so that I could address it in my next uh, batch of videos. No? So like what I said, our topic for today is a labor law topic. And it will talk about illegal dismissal. So, ano nga ba ang illegal dismissal? So, siguro magandang malaman natin um, kung ano ba yung mga sitwasyon na pwede talaga ma-terminate ang isang empleyado. Okay? First of all, um, an employee has the right to resign. Doon muna tayo. Ha? What if um, from the employee gusto niya mag-resign, mayroon siya karapatan talagang mag-resign kasi if uh, if a force mo siya, uh, even if ayaw na niya magtrabaho so then that would be forced labor so hindi naman allowed ang forced labor so if an employee wants to resign may absolute um, right naman talaga to resign ang isang empleyado it's just that meron din po siyang uh, procedural process that you have to follow if you're the employee and if ikaw an employer you have to um, make sure that the employee will observe this no? so usually resignation is um, a 30 day notice resignation um, and then, uh, yung 30 days na yun, it's actually meant for the turnover para maging maayos yung um, pag-turnover ng mga documents, mga files, or dun sa next in rank or the next person who will be replacing it. That's why it's important yung 30-day notice na yun. If, if um, hindi ma-observe yung 30-day notice, there could be um, damages um, na pabor papunta sa empl employer okay if hindi mo observe na employer so setting aside yung initiative of of um of terminating the work coming from the employee which is the resignation are there instances na ang resignation ang termination would be valid of course there are meron tayong kinatawag na mga just and authorized causes which um authorizes uh, the employer to terminate the employment of an employee if the grounds for the just or authorized causes are present in the case. So maybe in another video, I could discuss about the just and authorized uh, grounds that would allow uh, the valid termination of an employee. So let's assume that um, hindi, walang valid ground that exists. So um, walang just, walang authorized causes or grounds to terminate the employment of the employee at biglang terminate, tinanggal. So, bigyan natin ng konti example. Uh, what if isang araw na lang sabi, hindi ka na makakapasok dito, bawal uh, sabi ng boss, hindi ka na daw pwedeng pumasok, tanggal ka na daw, or on the spot, may nagawang mali, let's say, or napalpak ng konti ang empleyado, tapos may nang sabi, okay, um, tanggal ka na, uh, pack up and leave, and that's it, bye. So, those are instances na biglaan at um, mapapaisip ka kung valid ba or tama ba yung naging proseso okay it's important that i discuss to you two things dalawang bagay po okay uh, under the law dalawang da bagay dapat ang ma-observe una yung tinatawag na procedural due process ibig pong sabihin ng procedural uh, due process is dapat may procedure hindi po ura-urada hindi biglaan ano ba ang under the law na kailangan procedure dito po papasok yung two notice rule, okay? The two notice rule requires the employer to send a first uh, notice to the employee informing the employee of kung ano ba yung maling nagawa niya or any infraction or any incident na kailangan hinga ng explanation ang empleyado. So, 
um, under the law po, um, usually that should be five days to give the employee enough time para talagang mapaghandaan niya yung kanyang explanation. Pero once the first notice is served, with or without the explanation, after the lapse of the period given, meaning if kahit wala kang maipadalang explanation pero natanggap mo yung notice at lumipas yung araw na ibinigay sa'yo para gumawa ka ng notice, ay pwede nang mag ang kumpanya kung ano ang magiging uh, decision nila dun sa incident na um, that you got involved in. No? So, of course, after um, a hearing or, uh, of course, hindi naman to formal proceeding. No? This is administrative and internal in the company. So, may procedure dyan, may konting internal investigation and then deliberation. Pero if after that, mag-come up sila with a decision to terminate you, the second notice the second letter would already be the termination letter or pending suspension letter or pending reprimand or warning depending on the severity of the action um, that you got involved at. Okay, so um, kapag ka po na service second notice and termination, technically under the procedural due process, if na follow you to notice rule, the opportunity to be heard which is yung mabigyan kayo ng pagkakataon para makapag-explain, um, then, pasok na po, uh, pasok siya technically as uh, valid yung naging procedural due process. Pero second, you also look into, okay, let's say, nagawa naman nila yung due process ng procedure, pero meron bang substantial due process? Ang substantive due process, ang ibig kong sabihin noon ay valid ba yung ground na ginamit? Meron bang enough basis or kumbaga may katuturan ba? Or... Um, is it severe enough? Malalama ba talaga yung nangyari? That, or fair ba yung naging, kumbaga, commensurate ba? Meaning, uh, ito yung nag- nagawa ng empleyado, ganito rin dapat yung level ng parusa. Kasi baka naman yung nagawa lang ng empleyado, napakaliit, napakababa, pero yung parusa, ito na agad, which is termination. So, dyan papasok yung substantive due process. Yan po ay medyo objective, ibig sabihin um, case to case basis and sometimes yan po yung nagiging um, topic or laman ng mga diskurso pagdating sa mga position paper or sa mga actual labor cases kasi patutunayan na employer, syempre na meron siyang valid reason or valid ground or cause to terminate patutunayan naman na employee na hindi sapat yung dahilan na yun para da- hindi sapat yung ground for the termination. No? So yun, ganun po nagiging um, illegal ang termination either hindi na sunod yung procedural due process or yung substantive due process or both okay, pwedeng either or pwedeng both what naman po attorney yung tinatawang na constructive dismissal okay, so yung constructive dismissal naman um, uh, I'll give you um, an example pero ito yung mga parang um, hindi outright dismissal, pero in the end, ang effect niya talaga ay dismissal din. Okay? So, um, for example, um, a good example would be yung iba, parang um, hindi ka nga tinatanggal, pero inilipat ka sa department na totally napakalayo naman din sa line of work mo, or yung iba naman, um, iinilipat ng posisyon tapos sa mababa yung sahod mas madami yung trabaho or hindi na conducive yung environment compared sa kanyang dating ano in short pamamaraan na kahit hindi outright na sinasabing tinatanggal ka eh para bagang tinatanggal ka niya okay it's constructive dismissal or ibang instances naman is kunwari floating ka, hindi ka naman tinanggal, no? Um, under the law kasi may period na pwede naman talaga yung floating status, um, especially now, of course, during the pandemic, no? Pero, nag-go beyond na siya dun sa allowable period of floating status. Ibig sabihin, magiging na siyang constructive dismissal nun. Uh, if i-compare mo dun sa nauna na talagang illegal dismissal versus yung constructive dismissal, which is also illegal dismissal, ha? Ang constructive dismissal, at first, hindi talaga siya termination, pero in the end, termination siya, or yung effect niya is actually terminating you. At dahil hindi nasunod yung uh, procedural at substantive due process, illegal dismissal din siya. Okay? So, ano nga ba ang makukuha mo kapag ka nakitaan na illegal dismissal or constructive dismissal din sa case mo? Well, of course, uh, magkakaroon ka ng separation pay or maka, pwedeng i-reinstate ka pero kung hindi na pwede yung reinstatement 
uh, back wages naman po yung ya award So, bukod dito, meron din naman pong um, attorney's fees na kadalasan ina-award kapag uh, may monetary award na ibinibigay ang mga labor arbiters. So, um, if ganito or similar dito ang sitwasyon mo, you have to um, really consult a lawyer. No? Um, that's my first suggestion. Kasi para malaman nyo talaga kung pasok ba talaga sa illegal dismissal or constructive dismissal yung sitwasyon ninyo para alam nyo rin kung ano yung susunod ninyong hakbang. So, I hope you learned something in today's video at sana maliwanag po yung pagkaka-explain ko sa inyo kung ano ang illegal dismissal at kung ano din yung constructive dismissal. Once again, this is Attorney Ralph and um, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Bye!